Hello everybody, it's Santa, and today I have a new painting tutorial for you. I know when I first started painting, my first instinct was to grab black and white and use them to create my shadows and highlights. While it's not technically wrong, it can be very limiting. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some options on choosing and mixing colors for your shadows and highlights using color theory. So let's start off with a blank canvas. As you can see, these red spheres all have the same base color, pearl red. Using the same base color will help to show the difference between the shadows and highlights I'm about to create. So let's shade the first sphere using black and white paint. So my first step is to mix my black and white paint with my base red paint. I find you get the best control with this method and you can always add more white and black in later. This tutorial is focusing more on choosing colors versus blending paint. If you would like a tutorial about blending colors, I actually have one for you. The link will be in the cards above. As you can see, my black and white paint are creating shadows and highlights. And while they mix decently well with my base red paint, the shadows and highlights aren't very vibrant or interesting. Now let's use color theory to choose our next shadow and highlight color. So this is your basic color wheel. So on a basic color wheel, you will often find primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors. The purpose of the color wheel is to show the relationship between colors and how they can affect each other. For my next sphere, I'm going to be using complementary colors to create the shadow. Complementary colors are colors across from each other on the color wheel. So for blue, it's orange, for yellow, it's purple, and for red, it's green. This is what I'll be using. When you mix complementary colors together, they cancel each other out and can desaturate, gray out, or even darken the color. So to create my shadow, I'm going to combine a bit of green with my pearl red to create a much darker red. For my highlight, I'm going to use the color light magenta pink. The green I'm going to use is thalo green blue shade because the desaturated color will be a bit more on the purple side thanks to the blue undertones of the thalo green. Now I could just use white and mix it with my pearl red to create a pink color, but I want to use this pink because it was made with a different red and I want a bit more dimension to this highlight. So let's go back to the color wheel for the next shadow and highlight combination. If you divide the color wheel in half, it will split into warm and cool colors. I want a warm color scheme, so I will use orange for the shadows and yellow for the highlights. Since I want my shadow to be relatively dark, I'm going to mix some Van Dyke Brown with a bit of Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold to create an orange brown. For my highlight, I'm going to use the color Hansa Yellow Medium. I also want a red-orange transition color, so I'm going to take a bit of Pearl Red and mix it in with a yellow color. Creating a shadow and highlight color scheme based on warm or cool colors can really set the mood for your painting. Warm colors can be vivid and energetic, while cool colors can give a feeling of calmness or tranquility. You can even mix the two to create a very unique effect. As you can see, even though we started off with the same red base, each of these spheres look completely different from one another, thanks to the color schemes of their shadows and highlights. So I have one more example to show you, and that is the analogous color scheme. Analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Using an analogous color scheme is a great way to get some ideas for shadow and highlights. Such as this, and this. Shadows and highlights are very important to the painting process. They create dimension and help bring your painting to life. I encourage you to experiment with shadow and highlight color schemes as it can open you up to many possibilities. Alrighty, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and if you want more color theory videos then let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more art tutorials like this in the future then make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you would also like to continue following me on my art journey, then you can follow me on my social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!